Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Grace and peace from God the Father through our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ. Today's wisdom will be coming from Psalm, Psalms 11, verse number three. That's Psalm 11, verse three. It says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous, righteous do? Today, I want to talk about what can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? Of course, on yesterday, we talked about the foundation. We know uh, uh, as of yesterday, Genesis, in the beginning, God, of course, and God made man from man, woman, uh, uh, and children. God is a God of, of order. God placed man as the head of the house. He is the literally the foundation. He's the prophet, the priest, the provider, and the protector of the house. Of course, Satan has come to, to, to disrupt the orders of God to, to, to bring disorder, uh, not only in the garden, but he had come to bring disorder in every home. Of course, uh, pull God out of the home and, and from pulling God out, to pull man out, the foundation uh, it, it destroyed. And of course, uh, um, uh, I don't want to leave us uh, in a place of being hopeless, hopelessness, uh, in a place without hope, because there is hope. hope. Uh, the question is, what can the righteous do? Of course, in the Hebrew, the word righteous is Sadiq in the word Sadiq means uh, justified, just, cleansed, and in a right relationship. How can a man be just? Uh, uh, he is just or justified because of what Jesus Christ did at Calvary. And through his shed blood, he has a right relationship. And now he has a privilege to be able to go into the throne room of God. And so what can the righteous do? I believe James spelled it out real clear for us. James chapter 5, verse 13 through 16, he says, if any among you are afflicted, then let him pray. In other words, as believers, we're going to be afflicted. Even uh, the psalmist says, I'm glad I was afflicted because I learned your statute. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord deliverer. We're going to go through those afflictions, but we pray. Of course, when we are married, when things are going well in our life, he said we ought to sing songs. That is, we ought to give God praise. We ought to give God thanks. If any among you are sick, he says, what we need to do is call the elders. Of course, that word is plural. Of course, when we call the elders, uh, let them pray for you. They are in touching and agreeing, uh, two or three gathered together in name. God is in the midst. He said, let them pray for him and then let them, let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And if they have faith, the Bible says God shall save the sick and then the Lord will raise that person up. That person who now out of right relationship, that person who now has left his uh, uh, foundation, God will raise him up and, and forgive him of all his sin. And he says, confess your fault one to another, pray one for another. Uh, the effectual fervent prayer, here it is, of a righteous man, a righteous woman, availeth much. Of course, uh, much prayer for those who are in a right relationship, much power. Little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power. So the question is, what can the righteous do? I believe that if the righteous, those who are in a right relationship, begin to lift up the name of Jesus, I believe God will lift up our society. God will lift up our city. God will lift up our parish, this state, this nation, and God will lift up the world. So today, the question is, what can we do? We can pray. God bless you real good. May smile upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. That's my prayer for you and your family today. What can the righteous do? Let us pray.